I am health reporter Haley Hernandez. Now this year, the American Red Cross declared its first ever blood crisis. With the decline in donations throughout the last few years, some hospitals around the country have been receiving only a quarter of the blood that it requests on a daily basis. Now joining us now with more on that, uh, Dr. Glenn Ramsey, chair of the College of American Pathologists Transfusion Committee. Hey, good morning, Dr. Ramsey. You know, I know that there's always Ways, ups and downs throughout the year, summertime holidays, those can be kind of tough when you're trying to get blood. But what can you tell us on what, what are, why is some of this happening now? Is it the pandemic? Yeah, it's that's part of it. Uh, there's been uh, a effect of the pandemic on the availability of donors to be able to come out and, and donate. At the same time, there's been uh, a, an increase in demand for blood. Uh, it, it, there's something of a catch-up effect for people who, do, who had their surgery, et cetera, deferred for a while, are coming back uh, to, to get treated. So, so it's uh, very challenging on both ends in terms of both supply and demand. And can, well, can you also change on recent restrictions? Is that prohibiting anybody from donating? Who can and cannot donate right now? Yeah, if you are uh, feeling well and at least 110 pounds and 16 years of age, you're, uh, you can, uh, th those are some of the criteria for donating. Uh, the, the donors are asked questions about their safety to donate for themselves and also safety for their, uh, for their recipients of their blood. Uh, but many of the deferral periods for uh, such as travel or in some of the infection exposures have been changed from 12 months to three months to make it easier to donate. And if you, ever if you were ever deferred because you were in Europe for an extended period of time, you're probably eligible to donate now. Dr. Ramsey, now is your chance. What can you tell the public about mm -hmm. why it's important to donate blood? Well, someone needs a blood transfusion every two seconds in the United States. It's, it's really amazing. Uh, but only 3% of eligible individuals donate every year. Uh, and some of our uh, blood components have a very short shelf life as well, only a few days. So we always need a, a, a constant supply of blood uh, donations to treat our patients. I know here uh, in our area, the Texas Medical Center, largest medical center in the world, mm -hmm. they say that they have to sometimes prioritize patients based on who needs the blood and just so they can kind of ration the blood a little bit. Now, a little bit about what you were talking about, mass casualty situations, how fast can that drain a hospital's blood supply? Well, your, your viewers probably remember the Las Vegas uh, shooting five years ago this month. And uh, over 500 blood pro components were given very quickly after that event uh, to the victims, saving a lot of lives. Uh, but those units had to be available right, right already. Uh, they had to be on the shelf already. So you never know uh, what's going to happen, and uh, you need a, a constant supply of blood for, for events like that. Just list off really quickly, what are the most common things you need blood for? Uh, cancer, uh, um, surgery, uh, trauma, uh, sickle cell disease, um, stem cell transplants, organ transplants, those kinds of things. Yeah, we want to definitely serve those patients for sure. Thank you, Dr. Ramsey. Dr. Glenn Ramsey, chair of the College of American Pathologists Transfusion Committee. We appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Thanks for having me.